This week in the parish of Bourses and Market Structure, a Meribor swaps owner, a coup for eToro, and the London Stock Exchange Group exits IT sales. My name is Patrick L. Young. Welcome to the Bourse Business Weekly Digest. It's the Exchange Invest Weekly Podcast, episode 190. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very brief reduction of highlights amongst the key headlines from the week in market structure. All the analysis of the many events and happenings from the past seven days can be found in Exchange Invest daily subscriber newsletter, the unique guide to the bourse business sent daily to your inbox. More details at exchangeinvest.com, where you will also see our new website is in beta. Join us at exchangeinvest.com to sign up for the Exchange Invest Daily Newsletter there and read more of our free resources for all those interested in exchanges around the world. In BitCarnage this week, Gary Gensler made a rather emphatic statement. Make no mistake, many crypto trading platforms already come under the current definition of an exchange and thus have an existing duty to comply with the securities laws. Thus, the SEC are seeking to redraw the battle lines once again in terms of what makes an exchange, which has drawn cries of upset from the crypto world and the GOP commissioners, but on the macro doesn't seem too far removed from common sense, even if it does mean that DeFi is a lot more difficult to achieve. But then again, when was it ever going to be easy to disintermediate the millennia-old law and order systems of the world? The SEC crackdown has continued this week. The exchange Bittrex was sued as it was working to close by the end of the month. Anyway, turns out Bittrex had previously been given a Wells notice warning them that they were soon to be penalised. If you've enjoyed this expert, you may be interested to know that you can read BitCarnage every day in Exchange Invest. Alternatively, if you want to follow BitCarnage, the daily update on happenings in the world of crypto and digital assets, you can find BitCarnage as a standalone on Substack. In the world of legacy exchanges this week, Clearstream have created a new Luxembourg-based bank for global institutional fund investors. ASX is consulting on the future of the ASX Managed Fund Settlement Service. And Twitter have partnered with eToro to show real-time stock and crypto information. What a fascinating possibility this raises. There will now be a zillion angry eyeballs from the Twitter sphere, all honing in on data coming from eToro, and they've got the option with a few click-throughs to buy and sell stocks, crypto or other assets. That's got to be a coup for eToro, while demonstrating an interesting e-commerce angle for Twitter and arguably making more relevant what we see as a platform which was struggling for relevance. Hence, it got Elon as an owner. The bigger ramification for the data business may be, how come it's a broker partnering with Twitter and not a vendor? Some days I wake up and wonder whether vendors realize they may be struggling for relevance without execution capacity. I can't say that's a definitive viewpoint on my part, but I would be worried if I were refinitive, which remains an exercise in willfully avoiding strategic nice. The London Stock Exchange Group, meanwhile, they've launched a new trading service supporting best execution for retail brokers on Turquoise Europe. And the LME trial over the nickel trading debacle has been set for June 20th to the 22nd. Over at the London Stock Exchange... The Spectator this week ran one of many articles which all had a similar thread. The London stock market risks sinking into irrelevance, went the argument by Matt Lynn. He noted it's madness to sit idly by and watch the London Stock Exchange dwindle into irrelevance. The LSE is too important for the city to allow that to happen. And the city is too important for the wider prosperity of the UK to be allowed to stagnate. 
What the media is actually missing right now is that the LSEG has essentially pivoted into being a post-stock exchange stock exchange group. Thanks to the odd one's obsession with Refinitiv, previously described as a form of data Tourette's within Exchange Invest, LSEG has an am I bothered approach to its exchanges. As the old Reuters disease gradually undertakes a Stockholm Syndrome coup d'etat on LSEG management. Apparently, LSEG is eager to create a corporate culture. I remain unclear what that means. Some say the LSEG is confused about what that means too. It's five years since David Schwimmer was appointed Group CEO of LSE on April 13th, 2018. It doesn't really look as if his markets have improved, and indeed, as we scooped in the Exchange Invest newsletter during the course of the last week, the London Stock Exchange Group has even withdrawn from selling its technology for exchange matching clearing and settlement engines as it desperately tries just to cope with upgrading its own internal systems following the Refinitive merger. Of course, as I said, all that and more was in this week's Exchange Invest, keeping you ahead of the bourse business news. How can you possibly afford not to be paying $350 for that sort of information, ladies and gentlemen? In a marked contrast, over in the sort of country where they actually still value, largely despite their poor government, the whole issue of markets, Speaker of the House of Representatives Kevin McCarthy made a fascinating 100th day visit to the New York Stock Exchange. That's 100 days since he was elected Speaker. As he himself noted, I chose to be here, that's on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, because in many ways this place represents the best of the American economy. Fast-paced, future-focused and dynamic. For more than two centuries, this market has enabled dreams and changed lives for entrepreneurs and investors. It has helped turn ideas into reality, generation after generation after generation. It pays pensions, funds education, builds hospitals and supports charities. And it creates the incentives for solving challenges and then helps to make those solutions widely available so we can live a better life. Its impact is felt by every person, in every community, in every corner of the country. And every other country wishes they had this too. What a fantastic speech. Compare and contrast even that excerpt with the championing of the market. And look at the poxy pygmies of British government and elsewhere who are mutant markets, mutant stocks and, well, we've already covered the abject failure of the London Stock Exchange group to prioritise the London Stock Exchange in this bulletin alone, let alone within the pixels of Exchange Invest. But ultimately, that's what markets need. Champions like Speaker Kevin McCarthy, which is why New York is such a great capital of capital at the New York Stock Exchange and, of course, NASDAQ. Speaking of NASDAQ, their results were out this week. Elegantly eking up income before taxes, 5.88%, an encouraging 10% increase in the quarterly dividend, and overall another fascinating series of results which showed diverse product growth across the overall NASDAQ group. Congratulations to Adina Friedman and her team. Sadly, not such good growing news from the Warsaw Stock Exchange, kind of flat to slightly off, and Tadawul in Saudi Arabia dropping net profit 35.4% as the Saudi Arabian Stock Exchange monopolist looks to invest heavily in the future of the Saudi Arabian markets. Finally, Interactive Brokers, they announced their results with net revenues up a staggering 64%, income before income taxes up 93%, a powerhouse broker and one which doesn't need to manage to make a huge amount of money off its float of cash by endangering the safety of customers' reserves. In deals this week, one very, very exciting deal altogether. The American Financial Exchange plaudits to Richard Sander on selling his latest brainchild to Seven Ridge, the Karsten Kengeter and Veronica Augustson vehicle for investing in, well, all sorts of Paris-related things, but to date, mostly technology. An interesting side thought, of course, is that AFX was based on a close partnership with SIBO, who are themselves investors in Seven Ridge. Profit Exchange, they're continuing to advance their peer-to-peer high-frequency betting exchange in the USA and they've raised over $10 million in funding, while Deutsche Börse have led an 8 million euro investment in Nextgate technology. If you're trying to understand what's going on in the future of markets, don't forget you can always pick up a copy of my book, Victory or Death, Blockchain, Cryptocurrency and the Fintech World. 
That's a tome which is published, Victory or Death, by DV Books and distributed by Ingram Worldwide. While you're waiting for your copy of Victory or Death to arrive, don't forget to check out our live stream Tuesday, 6pm London time, 1 o'clock New York time, the IPO video live show. Check out the back episodes on Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube by searching IPO-vid. Our latest episode now online was a classic. We had the veteran former deputy chairman of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, one of the architects of driving that market electronic James Olaf. He was talking about what else? Markets in electronic transition. Coming up next week, we've got real-time risks, and that's going to be with another very well-known long-standing figure in the parish of exchanges, Alex Lamb. Product news this week, the Warsaw Stock Exchange are expanding their Global Connect portfolio. That's going to allow investors to come in and buy stocks from around the world. Interesting pair of first choices, Geronimo Martins and Inditex. Zara, of course, being Inditex, that's a mega brand in Poland as elsewhere around the world. However, Geronimo Martins may require a little more explanation. Portugal's third largest supermarket chain is also a leading supermarket chain in Poland thanks to some astute diversification by its founder Geronimo Martins when the Polish economy opened up as the Warsaw Pact crumbled. The European Union, they're moving to clarify sustainable investments after various fund downgrades. The Nigerian exchange and shareholders are recommending solutions on deepening the ETF market. Egypt is beginning to offer corn on commodities exchange and the China Securities Watchdog has approved trading of the 30-year Treasury bond futures. Let the Chinese yield curve trade commence in the futures and options market, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for listening to Exchange Invest Weekly. We welcome your feedback. You can contact me directly, patrick at derivativesvision.com with any comments. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed this show, we would welcome you giving us a thumbs up. Or if you have time, a positive review will always be welcome wherever you find this podcast. Technology news this week. Well, of course, technology news was dominated by the London Stock Exchange's withdrawal from selling their technology for the matching of trades and also in clearing and settlement, which was something that was scooped by our newsletter, Exchange Invest, this week. Don't forget, you can sign up for a trial. Go Sign up now and visit the beta version of our new website at exchangeinvest.com. Meanwhile, major buy and sell side institutions have proposed their own user-governed consolidated tip for equities. Frankly, who in their right mind wants the data decided by a broker, dealer or a bank where there is a clear price conflict? Alas, the corporate socialist nature of the EU means this proposal may fly, even as it flies in the face of logic. Exchanges are agnostic as to the price traded. Banks have a fundamental conflict of interest in that price formation. The European Union should see through this ridiculous feint and stop it, nipping it in the bud immediately. Tragically, I doubt they will. Nasdaq, they had a flurry of announcements. They led a £3.5 million Series A financing for Kuberno, uh, another governance solution to add to the Nasdaq portfolio, which has been enhanced along with their risk platform to help banking and broker-dealer community manage real-time risk. That was another announcement from Nasdaq this week. Meanwhile, the IEX exchange have enhanced their crumbling quote indicator to further protect investors amid volatile market conditions. Regulation news this week. The CFTC and the Bank of England continue to recognise each other's clearing houses. In other words, the most significant advocates and exponents of central start again of central counterparty clearing, the UK and the US. A. Recognise, agree and can regulate each other. The European Union now sticks out like a jealous sore thumb with their dumb, vindictive divorce act after Brexit. The other news course in regulation was what we refer to in BitCarnage above, the statement on alternative trading systems and the definition of an exchange by the SEC, reopening a comment period from last year, which looks to be likely to try and corral DeFi, CeFi and much else besides into the existing definitions of exchange. Changes. Career paths this week. The boss of the London Stock Exchange, David Schwimmer, who I mentioned earlier, is now coming close to the fifth anniversary of his starting work, having just passed the fifth anniversary of his being appointed. He started work actually on the 1st of August 2018, if my memory serves me correctly. Well, Chief Executive Schwimmer could earn £8 million in pay this year, despite growing pressure on the group. I wonder if that could be a fond farewell. Five years in, maybe it's time for new management. Maybe it's time for a complete decapitation of the board, the management and everything else, the London Stock Exchange Group. I might say this, you can possibly comment. I know, but at the same time, it is time for a revolution. A capital market revolution in London stock market because the LSEG is failing to serve its end users.
The head of the Swiss Securities Exchange, Thomas Zieb, the Swiss-Canadian executive who served as global head for Swiss Exchange 6, has now head, signed up to head the Fintica AI Advisory Board. Subhash Kelkar has joined the Bombay Stock Exchange as CTO. CFTC Commissioner Christy Goldsmith-Romero has announced Yevgeny Shrago as Senior Counsel and Policy Advisor. The SEC has appointed Deborah J. Jeffrey as Inspector General. And the Singapore MAS has announced that the longest-serving Chief of the Monetary Authority, the Central Bank and Regulator, is going to be leaving. Farewell to Ravi Manon. He's going to be leaving at the end of this year. Over at the LSEG Group, some radical lol announcements adding to the executive committee. Sat Vinder Singh is going to be leading LSEG's Global Data and Analytics Division, and Ron Lafferts has been appointed to the LSEG Executive Committee effective immediately. The LSEG Executive Committee, of course, being a bit of a shambles because people with profit centres generally don't don't tend to get there. It's full of HR and lawyers and general counsels and all sorts of people who qualify by dint of very important jobs but don't actually do anything that manage to sell business. Therefore, having Lefferts, who's effectively the chief revenue officer of the London Stock Exchange Group, has got to be ideal. Although at the same time, the appointment of Satvinder Singh to lead the LSEG's Global Data and Analytics Division really rather beggars belief for one simple reason. The brief for this job was we want an out-of-the-box thinker. So they've added a man from MasterCard who spent his entire life in the world of credit cards and payments. And in big world this week, the news media has been remarkably mute. Not just, it has to be said, about our scoop concerning the LSEG pulling out of selling exchange technology, but the inevitable took place before Easter, much to the chagrin of the UK's many detractors. The United Kingdom joined the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP, which indeed we noted was going to happen in Exchange Invest several months ago. That means that 12 nations with 15 1.5% of global GDP are now members of the broadly trans-Pacific group. In other words, that share of GDP is the same as the 27 nations of the European Union. The difference is that one group is experiencing dynamic and dramatic economic growth, the other is at best enjoying stagnation. By 2050, this group, even Ketri's Paribus, without adding, adding any more members, could amount to a quarter of global GDP. Whereas the European Union has seen its share of global GDP in perma decline throughout the course of its membership or its existence, despite growing in the number of nations for much of its history. Projections show the European Union as barely a tenth of global GDP by the time we reach 2050, which I think is frankly optimistic given the way things are going. Anyway, this is fabulous news for the United Kingdom, it's fabulous news for the many economies of Asia, and it's an impediment to lingering elements of the sadly deluded UK blob so-called elite, who so despise Brexit that they want to make Britain poorer at all cost. That may yet slow down the useless current government being replaced by an equally useless Labour Party at the next election. Who knows? Sadly, the case for politics in the UK seems to be lost when it's a case of trying to make the overall positive message for markets. And on that mysterious and magnificent note, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Patrick L. Young, creator of Marketplaces the World Over, publisher of Exchange Invest and the BitCarnage newsletters. I wish you all a great week in blockchain, life and markets. <laughs> This show relates to the business of bourses. It is not to be construed as investment advice, nor are we making any investment recommendations. Please consult an investment advisor before you make any investments, and for goodness sake, do your due diligence and do not make investments without complying with the regulations in your home state. Exchange Invest cannot be held responsible for any investment decisions made as a result of our program, which is for entertainment purposes only. The material herein is copyright Patrick L. Young at the date of publication, while our music and sound effects are sourced from copyright-free sources. Thanks for listening to Exchange Invest Weekly, the exchange of information.